start recording and we're recording. Okay, so um, we have a ton of ground to cover on this today. Um, since we announced this little live stream, um, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, uh, I think the most people we've ever had like RSVP for an event was like 200. Uh, and this has over 500 people now. Um, there's been tons of questions added into the event about this. Um, and emails I've been getting and everything else. So there's a lot of things to cover in this. Um, we're gonna try to cover as much ground as absolutely possible. I've made a list of questions here that I'm gonna use to prompt myself. Hans has actually gone through and made a, a really great document that walks you through all this stuff in a lot of detail. That's gonna be inside a blog post along with the replay of this video, which I'll post later this afternoon as soon as I can get um, get everything uploaded and ready to go. So I guess before we get started, um, let's say good morning and thank you to Hans. Hello and good morning, Hans. Hey, good morning, everyone. I am super pumped to talk about today's topic. I am too. And uh, for, for those of you who don't know Hans, Hans is the co-founder of Termageddon. It's a privacy policy generator that automatically updates as the laws change. It's something a lot of people inside of our community use, including myself. Uh, but he used to own an agency in Chicago with quite a few employees and a pretty, pretty big operation. And he sold that a few years ago when he went full time with Termageddon. So I guess let's just start this off by saying, um, what what kind of prompted you when you were running your agency? It was a fairly typical agency. You did big projects and things like that. What prompted you to try a same day website uh, service? Yeah, so I was looking at variables I seem to always have to deal with um, when building websites for clients, which is like, how do I deal with client turn turnaround, like turnover, like in terms of feedback and like, how do I make that occur faster? Um, variables like how do I keep clients interested in the in the experience of like the process of getting a website launched um, when taking like I was just reflecting on my experience of working with clients and I, you know through I don't know how but eventually I came to a conclusion like what if we could build a website in one day um, and we tried it and it worked and we made a lot of money and there were things that happened that I never expected like clients telling us this was the most productive day of my life and I didn't even do anything. Um, clients happily paying, you know, $3,000 for a single day's worth of work and walking out feeling like they had a significant impact in terms of like the design and ex like uh, uh, the look and feel of the website. Um, clients took so much ownership in the process. So um, it was kind of thought up through kind of just meditating on like, how do I offer a service that fixes these problems that I have with my agency, which is clients take forever to get feedback and I want to turn over projects faster and get them to our maintenance plan faster. So um, I didn't really realize how successful it would be though. You know, I, we just kind of did it off as a side project once and then all of a sudden happened again. And then, you know, we did a few dozen over the course of a few months and like I, if I, if I didn't marry a privacy attorney and run Termageddon, I can definitely say that I would have been possibly dedicated um, to same-day websites. Um, granted, we're going to go through a lot of things today, like who's not a good fit for same-day sites? Because there's this is not the answer to all of agency challenges and stuff. This is just a slice. Um, I'm talking about a slice of the industry but I do believe this service offering fits very well with that slice. So. Yeah, and I appreciate you kind of walking us through all that. I know there's there's tons of gurus online that say, hey, this is how you're gonna, this solves all of your agency problems and everything's gonna be fine and it's magic. Just ask me, the guy who's never built a website. Obviously, uh, that's not really the vibe we have in the group. Uh, that's not what Hans is here to do today. And I did wanna mention, yes, this is something he was doing in his agency a couple years ago when he was running his agency. He's not running an agency now, but he has experience doing this and that's why I wanted to talk to him about it. It's just coming from a place of, you know, sharing some of these things that work from him and seeing if it can help anybody else out obviously there's tons of people in here that were interested in this so you said you did uh, a few dozen of these is that right um that's right okay so let's let's start off with kind of like the pros and cons of a same day website versus your traditional uh it takes six months to get it finished type yeah, yeah well I, I think that's pro number one um 
you will never have a project that goes beyond one day to build a website. And that pro is the biggest pro. Um, and I, I wrote up a list here, so I'm going to read off here, but get projects done in one day, no sleepless nights, stressing about upcoming deadlines. Um, I can't tell you how good it feels to finish a day of hard work. And at the end of the day, you're not stressed about, oh, when am I going to get feedback for this? Or, you know, is the client happy? Like, you know, they they walked away happy. I think every single client we did this for walked away with, the, I, we had some of the best reviews we ever had from this program. Um, so the biggest pro is you get projects done in one day. Another huge pro is that clients somehow magically understand what hours are and that today's the day that we're launching your website. We have eight hours or nine hours. I, I, I typically did eight to nine hours, um, just depending on their needs. Um, somehow, when you pitch like today is the day we're going to be building a website for you, they they organize it in their head and understand that they need to prioritize what they want added to the website. So it almost forces it somehow naturally forces the client into understanding how to prioritize things. And you can be a guiding light during the date of development where they're like, Ooh, I'd really like to have a uh, e-commerce added into that one little section. And you're like, well, that's great that you want to add that in there, but that is not something that can be done in a single day. E-commerce involves X, Y, Z. You know, what I can do is add this to a future quote request um, after we launch your website today. And they say, great. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, let's do that in the future. So it organizes the client's mind in terms of like prior, like understanding you're paying for these amount of hours and this is the day we do it. And there's no day after this. So move quickly. Um, that is a huge pro. Another pro is, you know, we were charging about $2,900 for a website, uh, uh, for, for a same day website, granted I had, it was myself or another project manager as well as a web designer in on the meeting in together on the meeting. So it was two people working full time and that's why we charged three grand. Granted, I was using Avada. I was not a part of the tab community. I did not realize there's web building platforms out there that just crush Avada. So I, I think with the tools that are now available, it's even easier. And I think it's absolutely doable with one employee, like a one person agency being able to offer it. Um, you know, fun fact, if you're charging three grand and it's just you doing it, I mean, eight hours of work, call it 10 hours of work, you know, that, that's $300 an hour. Um, that's an incredible hourly rate. And like, Talk about, you know, I think a lot of agencies, how do I get from like $35 an hour to $45 an hour? This is like, how do I go from $50 an hour to $300 an hour? I mean, this is the answer. I mean, don't just start offering it and like go immediately into it. You may want to like test it out, see if in one day you can like build out a website for a friend or something like that. Although friends are their own red flags. We all know that. So I don't know. I, I, I eventually you have to take a leap and and try it out um maybe charge a little bit of a discount or something but um but yeah that hourly rate is also a huge value another pro is that it brings clients to maintenance programs faster that was actually one of the reasons why i thought of the same day website program and i'm not special there's actually lots of agencies that are doing same day websites and every single time an agency applies a term again they offer same day website i can't help but start a conversation with them but um uh, anyways, um, you get clients to maintenance faster because you're building something in one day and then boom, they become a recurring revenue mo source for you. I mean, talk about a great thing. I mean, if you're recurring folk, if you're focused on recurring revenues, when you have to do it, some work, you get paid a massive fee up front, And then afterwards you're just making monthly recurring revenue. That's a huge pro. So I'll stop there. Those are the main pros. Okay. And yeah, that, that was one thing I was going to ask later too, is, is if how many people you had on this, this one day project or, and, and if you thought a solo agency, like somebody like me that just works by myself, if that could be pulled off by just one person. So I do believe it can be pulled off by one person. You just have to leverage technologies that you're super comfortable with. You need to stick to one stack. Don't, you know, don't take on project. This is same day websites is not a place to like learn new things. Like this right. is like, I know things and I'm going to repeat this model again and again and again. Okay. So let's, let's, those all sound like great things we all want. So let's uh, come back down to earth a little bit with some of yep. the cons of, of this uh, versus your typical build. 
Absolutely. There are definitely cons to this program. Um, and I, I do want to note, I'm not here to sell anything. Like I, I, yeah. I, I have nothing to sell. Like I just, I love same day websites and I swear I would have been probably exclusively offering it if I wasn't running Termageddon. But anyways, cons. So not a good fit for all businesses. Um, this is a niche offering. Like you can't squeeze a triangle through a square hole like you can't you can't force this on people this is only for when it's a good fit and for me it was you know websites up to seven pages where they have um basic needs like contact forms google analytics uh good with wordpress you know and and they just need to disclose information online so that sure. people can be found yeah and i do want to dig into that that more deeply like what what is the scope of the project uh, here in a few cool um another con um requires hands-on communication for eight to nine straight hours and i'm i'm not kidding i you have to be dedicated to the project not to mention i mean that's what people are paying you to be dedicated so you have to set aside that time and it mentally it would take a toll on me at the end of the day i didn't want to do anything i just wanted to go to bed and relax and, and take it easy. But that is a cool, that's kind of also a pro. The fact that, you know, it's a hard day's work. You made some great money. Mind you, $3,000 a day is a million dollar in revenue every year. Sure. I mean, just to putting that in perspective. Granted, I, don't, I don't know. You could keep up that pace every day, but yes. Yeah. In, in theory. Think, yeah. In theory, that is how it works. Um, so you can't build any advanced stuff. Um, it could get boring or repetitive. You know, this is in my mind though, you're, you built a product kind of in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it's a service, but you've standardized it so well that, you know, but, but by standardizing, you've kind of sacrificed, you know, exploring new things. Um, you might not explore as much. Um, a lack of vetting can get you in trouble. If you are signing someone up for a same day website and that's not a good, that's not a good fit, I don't know what would happen, but I, I, I would imagine it'd be uncomfortable for everyone involved. Like you don't want to find yourself saying, Hey, we need to do another dedicated day. Like that would be rough on everyone involved. So some to take into consideration and I'll talk about later. I'm sure how to uh, vet properly. Mm -hmm. Um, last but not least, and this was an issue within my company, which is that, um, you could cannibalize your own market. You know, a, I, so my company was, we, as we grew, our standard operating procedures, as they constantly improved on, uh, were improved upon, we found ourselves being like, well, we can't really charge anything less than seven grand for a website. So we had a gap um, where we couldn't, we, we couldn't make it make sense to charge less than seven grand for a site. Um, we, I had staff, we were at the Chicago Board of Trade building, like we had expenses, you know? So anyways, um, a huge risk to this program is you could cannibalize your own market, especially if you're like offering websites for like four grand or five grand, you know, uh, for a website, you know, if you're now offering it for $2,900, well, you're making less revenue long-term. Sure. My counter argument to that is, well, you're doing it in one day. And for that six months, you could have done yeah. 20 more of these $3,000 projects easily. You know, that's one every nine days. So, um, so, but, but cannibalization of your own, revenues is certainly something to be concerned about. I had staff, some absolutely loved same day websites. That's where they wanted to focus on. They thought that was the future, but I had other developers like hard, more hardcore developers, like not excited about doing the same thing every day, day in and day out. They liked application development and building software and stuff like that, where every day was a challenge in terms of like, how do I think about solving a problem that we've never solved before? So those, those would be the cons. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that. I think the biggest one for a lot of people, and I see a lot of questions already coming in here, uh, and we're going to try to get to everything. I got a whole list and I'm going to try to come back to all these at the end. But I think the biggest thing is kind of figuring out what those websites are that make sense for the same day service. So if Joe Blow calls you up and says, Hey, I need a website, what kind of website, what kind of things is he telling you about the website that he needs for you to say, hey, this might be a good fit for a same day website? Like, what are those key things that make sense? So I, I would say first and foremost, whether or not you're offering same day websites, like there's a vetting process that every agency, I've had to lose a lot of hair to figure this out, but like you have to figure out how to ask your prospects the right questions just in general because how many times has someone come to you and said i want the prettiest website in the world and as you work your way through asking them questions you find out oh no you think you want 
the prettiest website in the world, but actually what you want is more business. You want more inquiries coming to your website and how we go about achieving that isn't necessarily building the prettiest website. Rather, maybe we should spend our investment into uh, getting exposure through search engines, a great sure. example. So the vetting process is still the same in terms of any website prospect you vet, you need to vet them just in general. But some of the additional layers you have to add on top to see if they're a good fit for the same day program is functionality needs. So do they need, for me, it was very strict, contact form, maybe two contact forms, um, a newsletter sign up form is fine. Google Analytics is good. Uh, Google Maps integration, that's fine too. And then Yoast SEO integration with basic on page optimization. Um, those are the functionalities, and that's what I define functionalities as. Like, that's as far as I would go. So, if they need to, anything else, like some sort of advanced filtering tool to search through products, or they had like a hundred products on their website, and although the 100 pages are all templated and they're the exact same. Let's be real. Even inserting that into HTML format, 100 different products, even if it's templated, is going to take a while. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. think about even, oh, WP Import can do this really quickly. Like I, I wouldn't take that into consideration when deciding if they're a same-day website fit. Like the process of setting up WP All Import and right. going through testing and trying to get it perfect, like – your day's gone. So. so I would imagine things like just if they say e-commerce or membership or anything like that, you can pretty much write that off right away. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. E-commerce, like, okay, if they have a third party existing PayPal link that mm. I just have to add a hyperlink, fine. That That's no problem. But if it's like, you know, I want transactions to occur on my website, great. That's going to be in that $7,000 plus range that right. we were, you know, talking about earlier. So, um, yeah. Those are my answers to that. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what my next question was, was what are some of those like red flags for you to say, okay, well, this disqualifies you from this program. Like what are the things we can be looking out, you know, if, if we want to try this, uh, what are the things we should be kind of hearing as, okay, don't, don't even pitch the same day thing for them. So e-commerce membership, is there anything else along those lines? Yeah, and I, the other side, I should have mentioned this. Um, in addition to functionality, we do under, try to understand like what type of like design expectations they have. You know, do they have a logo in place or branding guidelines? If they don't, can they get that before the date of development? Or on the date of development, do they want us spending the first two hours working on a logo for them or the first hour where we do like an expedited logo process? So, um, so you got to figure out how far along they are with running their own business and like, what do they have and what do they don't have? So, um, I think we had one person where we had to create a logo for, and I brought in an extra designer that day and I charged an extra $500 for them, for a designer to be in there creating the logo while we're getting the whole site built out. So, you know, I had staff to rely on. We at tab have other tab members to rely on. Maybe there's something there. Like we, we can connect with one another and, book one book each other or something to help assist with that process but um does that help answer that question? yeah yeah okay. so so i think one of the biggest things that i see uh in if i was trying to prepare to do this in my agency is like knowing what has to be in place before build day starts mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i imagine uh there would be a nice checklist somewhere uh, that I would probably share with the client way in advance and say, okay, these are all the things I have to have in place or we we can't even schedule the date or we can't start the build or we'll have to delay the project. Um, so what kind of assets, what kind of, wh what stuff needs to be in place before you can get started with all this? So you definitely need this. I mean, this is without a doubt, you absolutely need this. The client needs to understand that they are due physically in your office at 8 a.m. on the date of development, or if you're don't going the virtual route, which is subpar to being in person, I, I want to stress that. Like, it's possible, I've done it virtually, but when they're in your office, you can move quickly. So making, so checklist number one is <laughs> when you select this date, you're gonna pay, and that is the date you're needed to be there. No, no delaying the project, no coming in two hours late, because that's going to eat up your time and we're not, we're getting paid either way. So getting that checked off the list during the sales call, like understanding what pages they want and like getting that signed off on saying, this is how many pages you want. These are the functionalities you want. This is not what this date, date of development includes where you can like list off things like, you know, 
e-commerce, for example. Right. And um, anything that you request during the date of development that can't be done in that date will be added to a list of future development quotes that we can provide at a later time. Um, I typically look for websites that were less than seven pages. Uh, be careful for the people who say, I just want one page because <laughs> let's be real, they don't. They Well, they may want one page, but they want 15 different sections on right. that one page. So even then, I think that's doable with a same day website. But ultimately, we would give them a Google Doc, which would include each page and ask them to uh, title it and provide information about each and every page and what they're like we'd have like a goal section like what's your goal of this page and what copy you want to make sure is included and then like do you have any other thoughts or notes you want to add here um so we are trying to get uh before a date of development is selected which is usually about two weeks out but sometimes people wanted it fast and we do it like a week in advance but what we message between when they agree to do a same day website and the actual date of development is like their objective is to get as much copy and images to us and their branding assets, as much of that as possible. And had I known what I now know with Tab, I probably would have used like some sort of automated methodology to doing that, um, active campaign or something like that to get them to you know, follow a series of tasks and to get it done. But no matter what, what you communicate with the same day website program is, if you don't get this done by the date of development, that's okay. We are going to just be spending time together, figuring it out together during your data development, which can have an impact on how much we can get done during the day for your website. Um, so you always message the fact that like, I can help you, but it's not going to give you the most value for your dollar. And some, some people would just accept it. You know, I had a law firm that uh, they, I did a barter with them like in 2013. And when he found out I had sold my company, seven years later, he's like, hey, I know I've been, I've been, we bartered for a free website. I've been, can we just get this set up? So I had him come in for a day. Of course he didn't get any of the content done, but we basically worked him hard to get that content while we were with him. He was an attorney, you know, attorneys sometimes yeah. can take a little while, not Donata, my wife, who I, I think is listening to this call today, but, um, but, uh, attorneys can take a while to get that content back. They were, they were in person and we, we got it done and we got their website launched, but he sacrificed, you know, we only had like four pages done by the end of the call. So, yeah. So we had uh, Chantel from One Day Webs on our podcast like a couple of years ago, talking about this same subject. She, I think, she exclusively does One Day websites, and the way, if I remember correctly, the way she handles it is basically they have a, a checklist of things that they have to get done, and she doesn't even schedule their build date until they've mm. turned all that in. So uh, you can. You can uh, get all that information from her and start working on that on your own time. And when you're done and ready, then you can get on her calendar. So that might be another way to look at it too. Is I really um, like that. Yeah, don't even like I'm not going to mess with you until you're ready to go. Now you probably have a lot of people that fall off in between there, but that might be a way to ensure that you don't get to build day and don't have everything you need. But I mean, honestly, you're. <laughs> I don't, I, I've met very few clients who had all their shit together, right? So exactly. I, I think the idea of having some flexibility in there to say, okay, well, you need to get us all the content. Content to me seems like this is going to be the hardest part. Of, if it would be hard to write content for a website in a day, in eight hours with people there. So a lot of that I would figure needs to be up front. But if they haven't finished all of it or some of it needs to be tweaked, some of those things could probably be done on the fly during the build day. So, and, and therein lies one of the intangibles about the same day website program. Something magical occurs when you're in that room with that client and you're together working together because all of a sudden, if they don't have content for a new section, maybe you create it during the data development, you create it together. And because they're more integrated with that building process, they take a better sense of ownership into that website being developed. And that is an intangible I did not see coming when I first started same day websites, which is all of a sudden when the client's like, Ooh, can you slightly change that purple color to a lighter purple? And then you make that change and they update. So like, Oh, I love that. And they, they kind of share that experience you have as a designer, or at least I had as a designer where I'd make a slight change and, and then I send it to the client. I kind of, you know, be, be a toss up for feedback. But when I did it with them in the same room and they got to see the change live occur, there is some sort of sense of ownership they take into that. And, and I think, that is one of the 
intangibles about this program that I think works so well, which is the clients taking a sense of ownership into their project. And that's why we were, I like Chantel's method. Let's be real. That's probably the best way to do it. But I'm more of like a, I don't think most of my clients can fulfill those types of requirements. Sure. And I would rather have them come in as much as they can get with the knowledge that they will sacrifice development time for content helping time. Yeah. Stuff. You're buying a day's worth of our time. If you want to waste it, uh, trying to select a shade of blue, that's on you. Um, exactly. And then your job during the date is to communicate, Hey, we can spend more time on the shade of blue or we can just pick the one that you kind of like and then we'll come back to it at the end of the day to ensure that we have all the other stuff they're like okay yeah that makes sense let's let's do that you know right. so yeah or, or that's phase two we'll 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 do that as part of your yeah. care plan next month <laughs> yeah okay so i have a ton of what if questions mm -hmm. um and i think a lot of the questions we got in through the group and several as i've been trying to watch these scroll through here are what if questions so i'm going to throw uh i have four of them right here i've seen a couple more in here that i'll try to scroll through and grab while you're talking but we can kind of like uh short answers on these um yes uh to see to see what you think so um one we kind of covered right now but what if the client doesn't give you everything in time so my argument is accept that but let them be aware of the fact that they will be sacrificing development hours for content helping hours in the development process of their website right okay so what happens if uh, uh another what if what if the project doesn't get completed at the end of the day what if you're not at a place where you can hit publish and it's been eight nine ten hours yeah so i would definitely say you need to make some changes within your operating procedures on how to handle this in the future as as for how to handle this particular client i mean it sounds like you may have i would actually blame the agency on that and like myself included like i would blame myself being like okay, what did I do wrong to not set up the right expectation for what needs to be done? Now, if the client was four hours late or didn't provide all the content and stuff, you might have some wiggle room there, but how to handle this specific client when that happens, I guess I would do like a half day the following day um, or half day scheduled out in the future um, and just eat that cost, uh, personally speaking. Um, but that's a balancing act with, you know, how much did the client fail to help you? Um, but more than anything, you need to go back to your operating procedures and update them so that it never happens again in the future okay. or reduces the risk. Yeah. So I think this is part of that checklist you'd have to have of making sure all these things are in place before build day. But what about issues that pop up? Uh, can't get into my domain, don't know the GoDaddy password, last developer has it, or uh, the domain's not propagating, so we're updating the changes, but it's not going live on the website. So what about like those technical difficulties? Yeah, uh, that, so those, thank you for my, I haven't thought about this in multiple years, but those were some requirements. It's a no-go. You can't book us until you have your domain login information, you know, um, any sort of things that could prevent us uh, from accessing the website, like that is a requirement. You cannot book us until you have a short, like a short list of stuff. The content and imagery were after we got the basics done. So like the content imagery, logos, all that stuff, that was a highly suggested you provide it, but not necessarily required for the date of development. So stop that by having them provide that to you before they can schedule your date of development. You probably could set up like a Calendly link. It's like, you know, well, that might be a privacy concern. So. Uh, there's multiple ways to get it, but make it sure. a requirement before date of development. Sure. That would, that would be a must have. Uh, what if the client wants a million revisions? And there were several variations of this in the chat too. Like, what if they don't like what you're designing for them? What if they're really picky about all that? Do you have any kind of uh, design stuff up front? So let's, let's just start with what if they're being super picky and nitpicking every little design aspect and eating up the day? So the client signed up to have a website launched in one single day. That is a key component. So you need to reemphasize that fact to them during the data development. Say, look, sounds like you're not like, terribly excited about these particular designs. Hopefully you shared with them your previous work so they can see what a same day website looks like quality wise. Uh, but the fact is the design process is a subjective process that requires them to bite off on it. What I can tell you is that you, from my experience, when building a website in one single day for a client, when you made small little design changes, they like receive like they were so much more receptive and like alert to them that they took more of a sense of ownership into it. So I would say that, you know, 
yes, there could be the extreme situations and maybe we should discuss those. But with the same day website program, for whatever reason, these clients like really like were a part of the design process. So you don't necessarily get a million feedback pieces. But if you are, you need to re, you know, kind of step back with the client, restate, look, you know, I had a whiteboard and I'd list off all, all right. the pages. These are all the pages we need to get through. I love that you want specific designs, you know, but the fact is like, let's get all these pages created first right. so we can click that publish button by the end of today and we'll use the second half of the day to clean up and touch up um, certain elements that you want to see improvements on. And this might be a thing too, that maybe when you were doing this, you, you weren't, maybe some of these things weren't as available or you weren't as aware of them. I mean, there's so many, uh, website builders and themes and everything that have really beautiful templates where we could, we could at least say, you know, as part of the onboarding process before the build day, Hey, look through these, pick out a few that you like. So at least we can say, okay, well, they like this style or what this might look like, or if they just fall in love with one of those templates, that makes things um, a whole lot easier. Cause then you can kind of start with that as a base. I completely agree. And that's refreshing my memory of the past. We actually right towards the end, I was um, sending them, previous sites we built so that, and I use WP engine. So all I did was just duplicate that install um, and, you know, set up the new licenses and, and f flushed out all the content of the old site, but had the base in there, um, which just expedited the process even more. So the day before website development, you have to set up a license, a hosting license, you know, set up the staging environment, get everything set up so that during, you know, from 8 AM onward for the data development, you can just, roll through the actual development process. All right, so day of development. Let's kind of talk about how that day is structured. What is that? See, I didn't even realize before we got on this call that you were doing all these in person. Now that you've talked about this more, I can see why it being in person would be so important for them to be there for that instant feedback. I would, I would honestly hate for a customer to be, I, I work in my house, so uh, I wouldn't want a customer here, obviously, but uh, I think about back when I had my full-time job, we would have customers that would come in the design room and like look over my back while I was designing shit, and it made me, I was not happy when that happened. Um, so I, I, can, I can understand why that would be so important for this, but let's talk about what that, that build day looks like. Um, you know, do you have a certain schedule you're trying to stick to get certain milestones done by a certain part of the day? We're ordering pizza for everybody. What does the day look that like? We did, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, if you don't, if you have, a, if you work from home, maybe you could book a co-working space, like get a quote on co-working spaces and find out how much a dedicated room is for the day and add that into your cost. Or maybe you can go to their office that I did that several times uh, with success. The reason why the virtual program is a little bit concerning to me is just because clients get busy. They get busy when they're physically at your business, at your store or company office. Um, but when they are virtual, man, they just go missing. You're like, where did this person go? And you may lose 25 minutes waiting for them to get back in and, and provide feedback. So I can't stress enough how important that instantaneous feedback is. Now, during the data development, we would kick off things. So I got into the office at 7 a.m. I would verify that you know the, the, the license is set up. I have a coffee, kind of just acclimate myself with the project. I'd review the assets they've given us, and I'd write up on the whiteboard, this is how we're going to go about this day. Person, uh, the client comes in, or clients, sometimes there's multiple people come in, um, and um, at 8 a.m. sharp, we'd serve them like bagels and some coffee, and we would uh, go over the plan for the day. And you are leading this whole time. You're like, this is how we are going to launch a website for you in a single day. Um, and I would typically say, these are the pages we need to, I would first off confirm we're on all on the same page. This is what you brought to the table. This is what you did not bring. Um, and um, my first stage would always be to create all the pages and like get the copy just dumped in there. And then, um, I think the next stage would always be to, and, and try to do that by 10 AM. Um, and then, uh, I think 10 to 12, we would start working on, uh, functionality needs like contact forms. Hey, who receives this form? You know, do you want it to send anything automated to them when they submit a form, stuff like that. And then for the second half of the day, it's like basically tuning up the design of the pages, um, for the most part, really, that's really the, the, the latter half. So. Um, really what it is, it, it's all about that 8 a.m. meeting where you outline what's there, what's not there, who has responsibilities. Because if the client doesn't have content, you now have, they are now sitting there where they dedicated the day to you and 
they could be spending time writing content. Maybe they gave you content for their services page, but not their about page. Okay, spend some time thinking about your about page as I work on building your services page. So don't be afraid to assign them tasks during that day too. Um, but it all starts with 8 a.m. scheduling out what is due for the day and how you always tell them, like, my objective today is to launch a new website for your business. And we're going to do that. And I'm going to, using my experience, I'm going to help guide you along the process and help you avoid some pitfalls that could maybe suck up our time today. And I, so my goal is to have you be as efficient as possible. And usually they sign up, they subscribe to that idea and uh, want to work with you and, and getting it done. So what about things like going back in and putting page titles and meta descriptions and uh, alt tags for images and all those kinds of uh, submitting it to search console after it's published and stuff like that. Was that all part of that same day too? Yep. Four to five. Um, so uh, three or th I think it was like three thirty to four was deployment um, where we use Cloudflare um, and uh, had the clients sign up for hosting or sign up for our maintenance plan. Maybe throw out the WAM right there. Um, and then four to five was like, now that the site's posted, what do we want to do in terms of exposure? So like Google my business setup or submitting the site map uh, to their um uh, Google or Search webmaster console. tools. And I actually have them register for webmaster tools prior to the, the, the date of development as well. See, we know um, how, we know how dated you are now calling it webmaster tools. I know. I know. I, I just can't, what is it called now? Search console. Search console. You're yeah. good. Webmaster tools. Let's bring it back. Um, so yeah, four to five was dedicated to the sitemap submission and, um, you know, it sounds like, oh, well, how do I, you know, really make sure my alt tags are in there? Basically, anytime you upload an image, give it an alt tag right then and there. Um, sure. Whenever you upload a content to a page, make sure you have put in the proper headers. And, and it's, it's that simple for a same day website. You don't, you know, you don't use Moz or, or, or any other system to like analyze what type of traffic it's getting. No, we're taking what you've given me and properly displaying that through your website so that search engines can understand what you are offering. So perfect. Okay. So this gets me through all of my questions almost perfectly on time. I was hoping we'd get through that about 1040. We're just about there. Now cool. I would like to go through questions uh, from people in the group. There's been quite a few. Uh, it's kind of hard to copy those while I'm talking to you, so I have not. So I'll try uh, to answer them faster. Too. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, people that ask questions are things that uh, I didn't end up answering. There are a few people that ask questions that I knew we were going to end up getting to. Let's start putting those in into the chat again, if you would. There's 232 comments in there, so uh, and there's a lot about like cheese and touching screens and stuff like that. So while we wait a second for people to drop some. Uh, uh, questions in here. One of the questions that came up a ton in here was, what does that red button behind you do? <laughs> so I always, this is what powers term again, people. So <laughs> whenever I get a new subscriber, I have to go downstairs and, you know, flip some switches, push the green button. If someone cancels their services, I push that red button, but we don't want to click. We don't want to push that one. No, it's never, never been so. pushed. Uh, no, this is just for entertainment purposes. My my full time job is running a auto updating privacy policy generator called Termageddon, and uh, privacy policies are pretty boring, so I try to keep it as entertaining as possible. Hence the mothership. The <laughs> All right, so let me scroll through here, and we'll try to get to some of these questions. Um... While you're looking up questions, I will note that. Um, Kyle mentioned earlier, like, I do not like the idea of someone sitting behind my back watching my design work. And that is uh, something we took into consideration. We had a table where the client sits on the opposite side of the table. So that, and we would just turn our laptop whenever we wanted them to see something and provide us instantaneous feedback. So um, that, that I know that's a minor detail, but that's an important one because I, who likes people judging you as you're like trying to tinker around with designs and stuff. So by having them in the room and just turning your laptop whenever you want their feedback, that's the, that seemed to be the trick. So they're so, not sitting on the same side of the table with you. Yeah. So. Yeah. That would definitely be helpful. Um, and more pizza for them. So they'll shut up. Um, yes. <laughs> so Karen asked again, one more time, what is the deliverables and scope of work? So let's just quickly go through kind of that, uh, the standard things you would say came with a, a one day website. Yes. So a website hosted on a, uh, with a hosting plan in place, whether you're doing it, the client, or if you force them to do your own hosting or they just choose to do your own hosting. So those are the main two things, a website launched properly um, on a right uh, hosting environment with the right ongoing maintenance plan. Um, what are some other things? Uh, 
You said like up to seven pages, the functionality. Got it. Yeah. So contact form, Google Analytics, uh, Google Maps, Yoast SEO, a sitemap submission if they have webmaster tools set up or search console. Um, and uh, up to five to seven pages. Now, that five to seven pages thing is a moving target because if they want nine pages, but seven out of the nine pages are a service like a or like a, a variation of a product, okay, well, I can expedite that process a little bit faster because seven out of the nine pages are not special. They're all following one template. So sure. you want to understand how much, what, how many pages there are, but more, I guess, more importantly, how many templates are there, mm-hmm. um, templated pages where that you want to keep that consistent design for, you know, the respective pages. Yeah. The more, the, the less things you have to build, obviously the better. So, mm-hmm. uh, Suzanne asked, what is the client doing while you guys are doing the work? Do you have them working ahead? Yeah. So we have them, we assign a task to them that they need to complete, um, during the day of development, um, things that they may have not brought to the table initially, um, or like a great example, they don't bring us images. All right. You're sitting in front of Shutterstock and finding all the images you want. We had a Shutterstock account, which allowed us to download those images. Make sure they don't get the editorial one, editorial use only ones. Like make sure they're like, you know, you got to message that little detail to them. So we always gave them tasks. Now, sometimes clients brought us everything and we just got to pound through it and get it all done. When that happens, you know, um, we'd let the client, you know, take calls or answer emails on their laptop. Usually they brought their laptop in. Um, they can do stuff, you know, outside of work, but we always have them confirm we are your number one priority on the day to development. Like you will drop everything for us on that day. I mean, that's what helps us launch a website in a single day for your business and ensures that you have the best potential product by the end of the day. Sure. Um, is there a risk of losing a sense of value by delivering a product too quickly? So are you de- devaluing the, the product <laughs> you're making by saying, well, it only takes a day to do this? So I sat in on a same day website. Well, I, I was the project manager on a same day website. And by the end of the day, the customer did not believe that I created this program. He didn't believe me. He was like, I don't, there's no way I'm sitting in front of the person who does same day websites and created this concept. And granted, I think there was someone doing it in Australia because I started like looking at competition. I think there's like four or five other companies that I could find through search engines doing it throughout the world. Um, but he couldn't believe it that, that we were doing this and doing it so efficiently. So no, my, I don't think you're going to see a decrease in value. In fact, I think you're going to see an increase. People see you behind the scenes like Mm. how many times do you do a project and you charge five grand but they had no idea how much work you put into it this is giving them that transparency and seeing how much actually goes into a website so i actually think the opposite i think most eight people will find more value out of it than less value nice um so how does the the contract or service agreement look in comparison to your typical web build was there a completely different thing you had to put in place for something like this my wife's gonna kill me because I don't know the answer to this question. I don't remember. <laughs> this was pre Donata. Yeah, this is pre Donata. Okay. So uh, I don't know what we did. I don't know what we did. I'm sorry. Yeah, I yeah. can probably no, follow fine, up with fine. you with some answers. Um, Christine asked, "How did you handle payment? Upfront deposit or full? Yes. Full. Oh, there you go. Full upfront in advance before you can book a meeting with us. Okay. Yep. Perfect." Uh, Monica asked, did you have a library of templates to choose from? We did touch on that a little bit, that that would certainly be helpful if they could at least look at some, uh, some templates, but were you developing completely custom sites then? So at first completely custom because we had no templates to work off, but then templates. But you know, if you're using the elementors or oxygens of the world, I'm sure there's templates you can probably quickly generate or already are ready to go. Yeah. Uh, Jared asked, do you have a phase for integrations like their CRM or email marketing, et cetera? Fantastic question. So that falls under the functionality side of things. So a great example is like a newsletter sign up. Okay. Then it is required that you give me my, your MailChimp or active campaign login and password or share it with me properly. And I need to verify that I need to get in before you're allowed to book a same day website. So, you know, integrations, can be tough but they can also be easy so that's something you got to figure out and make a decision based off your experience can i do this within a reasonable time and what do i need before data development to ensure that you 100 can get it integrated 
Perfect. Um, so Michael asked, are there any kind of guarantees you're giving people? So he said, um, are, are any of the sites done by Hans still up and running? And did any of them deliver value? Are, were you making sites that probably weren't that helpful to the customers if you're that honest? Uh, no, I, uh, the first one that comes to my mind is a Christmas lights company who I went physically into their store. They had launched a, uh, a, a new brand under the business for like Christmas lights. And we had to build it in one day because like, I think target was looking at them or something. And so they needed something and they needed something fast. So we built the website super fast. Turns out I, th I forget, I, I don't think it was target, but like a, a major wholesaler saw the website loved it and said yeah let's let's and they ordered a, a, a ton of christmas lights so no this this works it also works for like events um when someone has an event coming up like and that's one of the things i mentioned in my sop like how can you market the same day website idea i i think reaching out to event organizers is a great idea to partner up with them because usually event organizers have events where it's only so far out in advance and you want to get a website live where people can, you know, have a link to purchase tickets or whatever, like as quickly as possible. Yeah. The other thing I thought of, and, and, uh, as a reminder, I'll post the document Hans put together on our website <clears throat> later this afternoon. So you'll have access to all that. And he did put a lot of like marketing sales information in there as well. Um, another one I thought of was like a uh, political campaign. So uh, we ended we up one. having our mayor here in town. He got arrested for a DUI for like the third time. So he resigned. Uh, so we have like a special election for a charm. Yeah, yeah. For, for a new mayor. And I had somebody I know, um, co contact me about putting together a website for this person running for mayor in town, but it was, you know, the elections in two weeks, we got to have some shit done, uh, immediately. So something like that might, might be useful too. Uh, Jared asked, did you have, did you do any design prep, like UI elements, adding global colors, things like that to your install before the day of? Um, so I think on paper, I like to do that idea, but I think I actually ended up, ended up doing it about 7am, like an hour before the client shows up. But ideally, yes, I think understanding what type of color palette they want, showing them some themes or like some other websites you've built in the past to kind of get a gauge for where they're at and what they want to see for their site. Um, those are all great things to do prior to the date of development, but don't underestimate the value of just being in person with them and having them be a part of that design experience too. Perfect. Uh, Nicole said, you mentioned helping with content. If that's something they don't come ready with, did you have a copywriter on staff? No, um, we just, you know, freeballed it. Um, that is not the appropriate word. I probably should not have said that. I apologize. Uh, but we just kind of worked together and worked, uh, worked on how best to say it. Um, I will note there are some new technologies that I think could be implemented into a same day website program like conversion.ai. That thing's pretty sweet. You can just literally have the customer say, what do you offer? And, and just type that into this one box and then you click enter and it produces like five different AI powered, like variations. <coughs> Shitty are content. Are they really? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. My opinion. But, but um, there are maybe tools that can help you with that content, sure. but eventually you might just have to, you know, take off the gloves and just go at it with them. And yeah. Just... And, and I tell clients that are stuck on content all the time, like let's get something on the website because something's better than nothing. You can tweak content instantly. Like if you want to go in there and change a word, it takes 10 seconds. You press publish. It's live across the entire internet. So we don't have to get it perfect on day one. Like let's get something in there that makes sense. That's something I would also say in the sales process, which is, a website is not this static thing that I think a lot of people think of them as. No, they are constantly evolving things. So by building your website today, of course it's not going to be perfect because there's never a website that's perfect. Sure. It always can be approved upon. And, and, and that's not a sales pitch. That's just reality. But most small business owners have no idea that's how websites work. They think you just yeah. get it up and then you're done. But let's be real. That's why our industry exists because people go with that mindset and then their site gets outdated and then they want to have a full fledged brand new website. Like, right. It's, you know, same day websites, get a website launched today and then we'll be there to help you improve it over time. So. Absolutely. Um, Jared asked if you also had regular builds, non same day work. He did. Uh, Donata went ahead and chimed in and says, you can use the same contract, but change the dates. So nice. Thanks. Uh, Donata. <laughs> not legal advice. I'll put the disclaimer. Yeah. In there. She's got to um, say that. <laughs> let's see. Uh, says there is a company that tries to claim intellectual property over one day website process and use mm. a quite passive aggressive language. Are you aware of them? And is there any real concern here? 
I'm not aware of them. Um, I would say that's my same day website service was something that we offered for, I'd say six months and I never got a passive aggressive threat. Um, that's really unfortunate that someone's trying to patent a service um, where, I mean, maybe some operating, I, I don't know. I yeah. think that's unfortunately rude and well, well, I have terrible luck since so, so I was promoting this event. So if there is that person existing, I'm sure I'll get a letter about this. Event. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> if you have, if you have some sort of, if you are this person who's patented a same day website program, maybe providing your insights as to why you believe that's patentable and why you deserve to be the only person to do this. I mean, Hey, I mean, we're, we're an open community. I'd be willing to hear your side. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Um, Jared said, did you have multiple people working on the site? Meaning someone was working on the back end while someone was working in the front end. Hans did talk about that a little bit. He did have pe several people in his agency that would be working on this, uh, but he thinks it's absolutely doable with one person. So do you want to expand on that at all or? Yeah, I was using Avada and, and, um, the, the technologies that are now available, I think it's easier than ever to, to, to do this as a one person shop. Uh, Sean asked pricing. Did you offer one flat price or like a menu of add-ons on top of a basic design? So I offered one flat price because I was really trying to productize my offering to the, to the world and saying, this is what you get. This is what you don't get. Now you may be feeling differently where it's like, okay, after site launch, well, you can pay a half day for some hardcore marketing services or something like that. So I chose to go simple and and just repetitive you know but you may find yourself wanting to do add-ons i don't think that would be an issue um david asked how soon do you lock in a care plan for the one day website builds so usually we would actually so we would i think we had them agree with their plan prior to the same day website but if they wanted to self-host like an hour before we close up for the day i would kind of throw it back out their way and just kind of now that they've seen everything that goes into a website having a new opportunity to repitch maintenance and man, our conversion rates, I think we're like 90% or higher for ongoing maintenance. Um, I mean, I could definitely uh, see this being something where you just said that's part of part of the deal is you're signing up for a care plan or we're not doing it. So I think that could certainly be doable as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and especially that you will, this is the hosting provider I'm using. That's a key component. If you're being asked to log into their FTP and like go into some sort of old school self-hosted thing, like, oh, that could be a nightmare. You ha like one of my opinions is you have to have a hosting provider selected. The client can pay that hosting provider or you can pay for that hosting provider um, and, and resell it to the client. But either way, you need to select the stack, the tech stack for, for same day to work. Charlie brought up this point. This is another good one for uh, homework for your client to be doing while you're busy building is getting their uh, their termageddon privacy policies in terms of conditions set up during the process. Well, we do offer a complimentary onboarding where we book an hour with the client, and ask them a series of questions and get their policies generated. So I didn't say it, but yes, there you go. So if you start doing a well. one day website, schedule an hour in there uh, for them to get on the phone that your client to get on the phone with Hans or Donata and get their privacy policy set up. Um, Absolutely. Or the day after. Or yeah. the day and after. And we would just book a meeting with the client. Yep. Sure. All right. Uh, Jonathan asked, how often would someone decline a same day uh, website? I guess if you pitch that to them and instead jump onto your $7,000 plus custom builds. So um, it did happen. Um, but I would say that if a client, if you pitch the same day website, that means that you probably in your heart feel like this is the best option for them. So I would say if a client were to pull back and say, Hey, no, I want to pay you more for like more depth, more analysis. I, I wrote an article, um, in the, the admin bar talking about our discovery and how we charge just for discovery. So they may have feelings or something that you may have to just say, awesome. I mean, if they want to pay you more for more in-depth analysis of what they need and stuff, great. Um, that, that, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, and, this and there's value to that because, when I wrote up that article on discovery, like that's a very real thing where people just don't know what they want and don't know what they need for a proper online presence. So let's not same day websites is a niche, a slice of the pie. Um, so people may just be a better fit for other programs. Sure. And this sounds like it would be your lower tier offering. One of the questions I saw earlier and I hadn't seen it put back in here. Um, I couldn't go through it, but somebody asked like, how do you get a client to spend $3,000 on a website that only takes a day to build? And I think part of that is 
is three thousand dollars a lot of money for some people building websites inside the admin bar three thousand dollars would be one of their most expensive jobs for other people they would never touch a website for three thousand dollars so take this twenty nine hundred dollars hans was selling websites for and you're gonna have to uh, do some math to make it apply to you so his typical projects were starting out at seven thousand dollars and he was selling this for three thousand dollars so this was a discounted type product. So if you're selling websites for $3,000 now, this might be a $1,500 option for you. Now you'll have to decide if is $1,500 uh, worth pulling your hair out for an entire day or not. Does that make sense for you? <laughs> but chances are this isn't your more expensive option and this isn't your, it costs the same thing as typical. This was a, a smaller priced offering for your agency, right? You know, I, I, yeah, it, it is. And I will note though, I, I had an electrician come into my house a few years ago and I paid him about three grand to fix some sort of electrical problem I had. And this person, I saw him just working his butt off all day, went into the evening, just working his butt off. And like, I happily paid that three grand because I have no idea how to do electricity, you know, and just, I, this is always my message forever, but do not underprice yourself. Like you will lose hair and you will get burnt out. Like Price yourself accordingly. Personally, I would never offer same day website for less than $1,200. And I don't care if you're working from home and you're a one person shop because you deserve to be paid over $100 an hour for what you what you do. If you're a brand new agency and you've never built a website, sure. okay, I changed my opinion. But if you're a part of the admin bar community, you have a couple of websites under your belt, you need to be focused on being paid for your time and not sure. being just a generous person where you just want to do things for free. Please yeah, hear I, my words. I do I like that. to keep in mind, uh, mm -hmm. while a lot of our audience is in the US or in Europe, we do have people in countries where a thousand dollars for a website would be a uh, highway robbery. So I like to just put that in perspective for You're people. Right. Thank you. Uh, it's just easy to, I, I would think of this as this is your lower tier offering. So whatever you're charging now, this would be probably under whatever you're charging for a typical website now. Um, cool. uh, did you ever not complete a website and have to refund money to people? No. Well, we built one every single time. I think one day, one project we did have go into the following morning and i'm sorry i'm I, i'm recollecting a lot of my thoughts no you're a lot good of things have resurfaced today uh, which is we were cool, transparent but... about how all this was going down yeah um yeah i do believe i i can't even remember for what kind of company it was or anything but i i, I have vague memories that like uh we had like two more hours to do and and we did it on the next day client was happy and became a maintenance client so i do believe that has happened before so um, Karen asked, she missed the first few minutes, uh, is his one day company still exists? No, Han sold no. his agency several years ago. This is what he was, uh, he was doing these builds kind of towards the end of that. Um, so he, he sold that agency when he went with the uh, Termageddon full time. Now, um, in full, uh, I don't believe the buying company, the guy who buy, bought my company, uh, great person, great company. I have nothing but positive things to say. I believe they shut that program down. I'm not for sure. I haven't really looked at it, but um, I believe they shut it down. I would be curious as to know why. I bet they feel like it was cannibalizing projects that could have been eight to nine K. They're like, ah, let's just do this in a day and just have an easy going life. Um, I'm guessing that's why they canceled it, but maybe they didn't even cancel it. I, I'm not sure. That was a waste of time. Let's keep going. No, you're good. <laughs> um, uh, Kate said, thoughts on, try on tying them into a 12 month contract and spreading out the cost, including the care plan. So let's say this was $3,000 and $3,000 is still a lot for some agencies. What about just adding in whatever the care plan would be uh, over the cost and kind of financing that out? Do you think that could still work with the same day setup? You, when you finance something, you are taking the risk and assumption that your client will pay bills on time every month until the bill's paid off. I'm not a finance, uh, my background's finance, but I am not one to give out loans. Like that's not the business that I'm in. Um, so I, I wouldn't personally do it, but do I see people offering it as a cash flow alternative? Sure, I do. I just think you're taking on more risk than you need to. Maybe charge a premium, like 20% on top, or yeah. maybe do it in reverse. Say, hey, it's this much per month, but if you pay upfront for the year, you get 20% off maybe those options might um, help. The good news is that all you've done is done one day's worth of work. So worst case, that person doesn't pay their bills. You've lost one day out right. of 365 days, which is a nice thing uh, versus spending six months on a project and then they ask for a refund or something like that. So. 
Well, we're, we're running right up on the hour now. So I got two more left and then we're going to get out of here. Um, like I said, I'll be posting this replay along with a, a like 15, 1600 word blog post that basically is kind of uh, going over all of this in a lot of detail. Some of the things we didn't cover, like how to market this service, how to sell this to customers and things like that, that Hans uh, put together for us, which was very kind of him. So I'll be posting about that later this afternoon and you can uh, go back and check that out. But two things. Uh, one, Jared said, uh, do you also cover the lunch? Which I would imagine you probably did. Yes. Yeah, at our price points, it was they they drove to us. Now, if we drove to them, we'd jokingly say, you have to buy us lunch, and they always would. So lunch is a nice exchange of, hey, if you're coming to me, I'll pay for lunch. If I'm coming to you, you're paying for lunch. And it usually kind of just breaks the ice a little bit and, and makes it fun. Fair so. enough. All right, and I think we have to end on this one because this might be the best comment in here. And Lorraine said, new service, overnight website, client brings wine. I like that idea. <laughs> It's a That's good one. Challenging it. I love it. I love it. That's a great idea. You could definitely stand out with that one, Lorraine, and get drunk while doing it. So sounds perfect to me. I like it. All right, Hans. Well, I really appreciate you doing this for us. Like you mentioned, uh, you weren't on here to sell anything to anyone. You did this because you wanted to share this idea that that you did and, and hopes that it's helpful for other people. But I do want to give everyone a chance who doesn't know you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Termageddon hey. while you're here? Uh, I want to at least give you that opportunity for you taking an hour out of your day uh, and hours putting together some content for us uh, uh, in exchange for that. I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about it. Well, I appreciate it, Kyle. Thank you. And and uh, yeah, that's awesome. I was not expecting that. So um, Termageddon, we are a website policy generator. We monitor privacy laws and push updates to your website policies whenever the laws change. If you're an agency building websites with contact forms or analytics, that means you're helping your clients collect personal information and your client may be required to comply with a multitude of privacy laws because of that fact. Rather than ignoring the fact that the client should have a privacy policy by law, educate them on the fact that they may need one. And we offer pre-written emails, pre-written waivers that you can use to protect your own agency by getting documentation that you told them, hey, I built a contact form for you. You can't come back and sue me because of that fact. Like you need to comply with private privacy laws, not me. Termageddon, we're an alternative to a privacy attorney. We're $99 a year. As an agency partner, you can resell our services, meaning that you can buy licenses from us one at a time at wholesale rates, or you can refer clients to us using your promo code where client gets a discount and you make recurring commissions for the lifetime of every referral. So we are a website policies generator completely focused on web agency partnership relationships where we give you the ability to make recurring revenues while protecting your agency and helping your clients get protected. Yes, and we, we have uh, conversations pop up in the group every now and then with you and uh, some competitors that offer privacy policies and things like that. And a lot of times what comes up is, uh, what's the difference between you and X company? And for me, this right here is the difference. Uh, Hans and Donata are both very active in this community. They, uh, they support Happy Hour. They sponsor that. They're there at every meeting. They're here to help everybody out. And they've really built this program around how does this, how does this work? for agencies obviously the end goal here is um these privacy laws are serious things and they're they're there for a reason to protect consumers and that's important um but clients in clients probably aren't going to under, ever understand the importance of those things so really going to the agency makes the most sense and you've built this around agency agencies being able to offer this not only to uh, make themselves stand out i use this a lot in fact i wrote a, a prospect this morning that sent me a site uh, they do this all the time like uh, i want a site just like this and they send me a site and then i comb through the site and tell them well there's like 500 things wrong with this site. Are you sure you want a shitty site like this? And one of the things I mentioned to him was like, hey, they have Google Analytics installed and they have these contact forms and stuff and they have no privacy policy, no terms of service or anything. So they could actually be, uh, I always use could because I'm not a lawyer. Uh, they could actually be breaking laws by not having that thing on there. So it's really they important are. you know yeah. who you're hiring to do these websites because uh, you could end up in a lot of trouble. So not only being, you guys are focused on web agencies, not only being able to position themselves that way and providing resources to help you do that, but also to actually turn this into recurring revenue. So I have quite a, most of my care plans, client, care plan clients on Termageddon, which was an upsell. Uh, they pay additional for that every month. Um, and then when I'm doing new builds, they basically have a choice inside my contract that says, you know, either pick this, pick this or, or sign this waiver saying I offered it to you and you didn't want it at all. But most of my clients are signing up for that now. 
it's not huge sums of money, but it adds up over time. So I think just, just the fact that y'all are here present inside the community, helping out uh, agency owners, and you've thought of all this through like the lens of agencies to me, that's the big difference I see because I don't understand uh, the law part of it. I, I know Donata could get on here and say why uh, some of these competitors aren't actually uh, providing the right things because of these legal standards. I don't understand that. I, I don't care to understand all that. I understand mm -hmm. it's important, but I don't care to understand it. But yeah. for me, this is the biggest difference. So cool. uh, we did have somebody in here ask, uh, Ruth asked, do you cover GDPR? Yes. Uh, yeah. Donata actually teaches GDPR to other attorneys uh, at the Illinois State Bar Association. So yes, we cover GDPR. Perfect. All right, Hans. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here and doing this today. I was really looking forward to this. I think we had around 250 people watching this Amazing. live, which is pretty awesome. And this will go out to everybody. Uh, and I just, I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing your experience doing this with people. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you'll be around to see the comments in the group afterwards. I, I'm so honored to be, you know, Kyle, I say it again and again, but I was alone for seven years and the admin bar is my home. Like I just, it means the world to me that people want to hear what I have to say. Being in a silo for seven years, just thinking through things myself alone, um, the admin bar is just amazing. And I'm, I'm just so honored to be welcomed into this community. So. Well, you are very welcome, sir. <laughs> all right, guys, we will catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye.